days of our of our time and our fellowship uh, with some you know really heartfelt uh, you know expressions of gratitude and very serious uh, love and, and for that to start that off we're going to have Mr. Dick Hillegas um, for the very serious uh, it's it's going to be so serious uh, so yeah uh, Dick if you would please when uh, they asked me if I would come and say a few words for you know about McKenneth I thought well that'd be really nice so I went down to my uh, library and started to walk you know through the, what I wanted to say but I ran out of reading material so writing material so I started thinking you know this is the fourth time that I've been up here to say something nice about him four times so I figured well you know I did something for his 15th anniversary here for his 20th anniversary here for his 25th anniversary here and now for this one so I thought well what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna recap a few things because I still have the write outs for most of them and for the 15th, I, I'm just going to do a little parts of it. It says, we want you to write a little poem. That's all that they did say. A poem to honor McKenneth King on his special day. And then skipping on down, it says, someone who is always in a hurry, he needs a 30-hour day to get it done. I hear he finally got caught up from the year 2001. Now, over here to 20 years, a little excerpt from one, it says, a poem just to honor him, he's such a special guy, someone who always makes you laugh and give you a shoulder when you cry. And then it goes on, someone who is always in a hurry, he needs 30 hour day to get it done. You know what goes on there from there. Now for the 25th, it starts out, you know, basically same way, and there's an also another part that says, Someone who is always in a hurry. He needs a 30 hour day to, to get it done. I think you've got a theme going on here. I'm not sure. But now um, it's kind of easy to get him sidelined because you mentioned two little grand boys. And, uh, you know, you can see that he's big smile on his face and talking about his little joy. That was supposed to be a poem, and I didn't do it right. Oh, anyway. I hear he has an advanced order to get an iPhone 20. He needs special storage to uh, save a few thousand pictures because I know he will be plenty. And uh, this, uh, <clears throat> at this 25th anniversary thing, I don't know if you people were here, it wasn't that long ago, but we handed out kazoos to everybody. I don't know if you remember that or not. And we all did, you know, for he's a jolly good fellow with our kazoos, if you, if you remember that or not. But now, for this one, we have a lot of good memories. And uh, I don't know, is this going to come up? My little picture? Okay. Do we have a picture? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, here we go. We had a lot of good memories. This is the only picture. This is it. <clears throat> we had a lot of good memories, a lot of fun we had. We went trick or treating one year. Uh, for some of the elderly and shut in from the church. And I don't know if you remember, these people are known as the Damerons. And we went over there, and of course, when you're trick or treating, you take your you know, toilet paper with you, and you're going to TP the house. And Mr. Dameron looks at us and he says, You don't need that. We have bathrooms here. Even at our staff meetings, we had uh, been known that Eric uh, would separate McKenneth and I because he was always such a bad instigator causing trouble. Anyways, I'm going to cut this short because you know, there's a lot more important things to listen to in this. But to wrap it up, I want to say, so I'm at it again, writing another silly poem. I guess it must be my thing. But this one has a special purpose. It's for my buddy, McKenneth King. Thank you. So yeah, we'll uh, open it up now if anybody has anything special they want to share. And we'll bring the mics to you. Uh, 
I'm Sherry Osterheld, and I met McKenneth King probably the first day or week he was here in this area. We have been friends for um, many, many, many years. <laughs> um, I cannot say enough about them. McKenneth would do anything for anybody. Uh, just recently, our basement flooded, and the first person we called was McKenneth, and he came over and helped us take our wall apart and find out where our leak was and figure out what we had to do. But through all the years, Pam and McKenneth have been such a part of our lives, our boy, my son's life, their boy's lives, and I don't know anybody um, who has the love of God and the heart for people that they have. Thanks, McKenneth. I'm Jeannie. I'm Jeannie Holder, and uh, I've been here about four years. And McKenneth is very important to me. I'm going to miss him. For a little over a year now, I've been doing the communion every month, and uh, he always comes checks on me, make sure I got supplies, and we'll sit around and we'll just swap a little bit of bull every once in a while. And this Friday, I went to do it, and he wasn't here. <laughs> so I really missed him Friday. I walked up and told him that earlier, and I'm going to miss him. I'm not a mu musician at all, but I know what I like. I like good music, <laughs> and I don't know what separates good music from bad music. But I know one thing. When I sit down in, in, in church on a Sunday morning, and McKenna's is playing that piano, my heart, <laughs> my heart is with the Lord. And it's not because of me, but it's because of the talent that the Lord gave McKenna in playing that piano. I absolutely love it. I've loved it since the first day that we came to this church. Uh, I've been fortunate to be in another church that had a good musician. But it just is a wonderful, wonderful experience um, that you don't necessarily realize until you don't have it. And for me and my family, we love you. Okay? Kenneth, you'll hear that again. Uh, just like to express appreciation to you for all of your good work and the talents that you brought to our church, uh, uh, for all the things that folks have not seen a lot, how you have developed uh, musicians uh, throughout, um, not only at church, but the community through the Christian Youth Theater and through some of the orchestras that have come, the competitions that, that we may not know about. Um, thank you specifically for working with all three of my children who uh, all really adore you and think a lot about you and you've made a real difference in their lives. Uh, we've just been so, so thrilled to have you a part of us. My wife Connie shows a lot of appreciation when she worked here uh, as a secretary. You all had great fun together, um, just, just bantering back and forth. And so one parting comment, one parting word that I would have uh, as the southerner that you are, there's only one word, hey. And hey means most anything you want it to be. <laughs> Thank you, McKenneth. Hey, McKenneth. So, um, I, I'm one of the, uh, I, I, 
looking around the room, not too many of us were here before McKinneth, and I'm, I'm amongst the younger of them. Um, but uh, it's been such a joy to grow up in this church with your, um, with your guidance, with uh, the role that you've played in building talent in so many individuals. Um, I remember Creative Arts Camp uh, for several years, getting to um, take some of the stuff we learned very clinically from school and getting to express our hearts with it in the hymns and the songs that we were able to play, uh, not for our glory, but for God's glory. And that's something that you've shown so many of us growing up um, is how to worship God with the talents that he has given us. Um, and I thank you for also teaching my wife piano and, um, you know, long before, long before we knew each other, um, you know, God, it's just so amazing to see the work that God has done in you, through you, over the years here at Chancellor. Thank you. Chris Hemsworth. Hey -o. <laughs> so, there he is. <laughs> uh, you know, we're all here to gather to celebrate uh, McKenneth, but enough about him. Uh, you need to think, how is this going to aff affect uh, Dave Clawson, really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just want to say, uh, the first time I met uh, McKenneth, actually the first time I saw you two, Pam and McKenneth, is when they came here to play, remember that concert, and I was just blown away by the talents you guys shared with us, and I was thrilled <laughs> when I found out that you were coming here. Uh, and now I'm saddened <laughs> that you'll be leaving us, but you're still in the area, so don't, you know, we're going to stay in contact with you. Um, the, one of the first things that happened was I, we were having a dinner here, and Pam came up to me and said, hi, she said, I'm Pam King, and I'm starting a theater uh, ministry here at the church, and we're going to do this thing for Easter, and we need somebody to play Jesus. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I was a lot, yeah, I was a lot younger then. So, uh, <clears throat> and uh, so, but... Uh, it, that was the beginning of a great time together with McKenneth and Pam. We did a lot of uh, shows together. And then uh, uh, the, the acne of all that was in Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, McKenneth was doing the music for that, and Pam was uh, directing. No, no, she was uh, No, she was in the show. She was my wife. That's right. <laughs> I'm sorry she couldn't be here tonight. Oh, I remember this so well. And... Uh, <laughs> And, yeah, yeah, what's that? No, he's, no, no, not yet. I should be. I will be retired this year. So, and then, <laughs> so, so uh, we were doing rehearsals and you're doing the opening, uh, no, I was doing uh, Rich Man. That's right. We were doing the song Rich Man and it was at a rehearsal. And uh, I always told McKenna Van, you guys are great. You know what you're doing with the orchestra and everything. And I said, you're, you're, it's making it so easy for me because no matter how I go, you know, you're following me. He says, oh, yeah, you can do whatever you want and, and we'll follow you. And I said, okay, that's great. And so during the rehearsal, I kind of went like 10 times faster <laughs> than I had ever gone before. And I looked around and McKenna was going <laughs> like this. <laughs> He got good exercise out of that. And then <clears throat> another incident is this was live <laughs> in front of an audience. At the beginning, the way it was staged was uh, uh, everybody was frozen on stage, you know, until the lights came up. And then the orchestra began a vamp. How did it go? Doom, do, 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 do. I don't remember. <laughs> and uh, and uh, then as soon as the vamp came on, the spotlight would come on me, and I'd begin the show and speaking a few words. This one night, I don't know what happened, <laughs> but I forgot to go on stage. 
<laughs> I was walking around, you know what I'm saying, and I, walked, I finally walked to the back of the stage, and I'm looking around, and I hear the music playing. I figure they're warming up or something, and there's a stage in there that says, you're supposed to be on. And I said, yeah, right. <laughs> No, no, they were laying on the look, and sure enough, there's everybody on stage, the music is playing. <laughs> and poor McKenna, he had to play that vamp about 25 times. Dun, 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 until I finally ran out there and got the show going. But I want to thank you for saving me <laughs> all of those times, McKenna. And uh, I just want to say how much we love you and respect you and Pam. And um, it's just been a wonderful time together with you. So thank you for all you've done for us with the music, which part of the worship service, that's, you know, I feel I really connect with God through your music. So thanks, McKenna. My turn. I'm Mama Jean, in case people don't know who I am. McKenna, what do you think of all this set up? I mean, it's so beautiful. I mean, I don't know what I would think. I'd probably think, they really did love me. Or, they're so glad to get rid of me that they really did it up nice. <laughs> no, we're going to miss you. But you just remember, I'm family. And if you don't believe it, Pam will tell you that I am. But when I found out you were going to leave us, you just knocked the wind right out of my sails. And not only that, the light in the lighthouse went out too. So I have a pen I want to give to you. So when you think the lighthouse is out, just turn it on and write with it, and you'll think of us. God bless. I might not be able to speak long, so I'll try to make it quick. I just want to say it's been such a pleasure um, serving with you in the bell choir and you've always been such a great help to us and such a great support and we will not fill your shoes but I wish you um, happiness and joy and safety in the new chapter of your life you'll be beginning and like everybody else I'm hoping we'll still see you often So I am one of the people that has had the advantage of being at Chancellor almost as long as McKenneth and Pam. Um, and I didn't realize when I was five years old how incredibly gifted he was um, as a minister of music. And um, I just took it for granted. And so as an adult, when I was out looking for churches, it was extremely difficult to find something that fit that standard. But um, I am so thankful to both you and your wife for uh, helping me to grow as a, as a musician and as a person. I was one of the people that got to briefly take piano lessons from you, and my parents failed attempt to get me to be good at music. Um, it wasn't until Pam reached out that really I was able to, to do much with it. But um, I, I'm so grateful for all of the time and the, the energy that you both have poured into us um, and to helping us grow and, and do things that I know personally I love so much and wouldn't have done if it weren't for you all. So thank you so much. I promise to be nice. I used to be a terror in my younger days. Um, but um, I've been here even longer than you have and it's not going to be the same without you here. It's been an honor to work with you. And I wasn't always as I'm not a great flute player, but I wasn't always good at all. And he's helped me, you know, grow over the years with love and patience and a lot of kidding. So <laughs> thank you very much. Along with Marsha and Penny, I'm also on the bell choir. And McKenneth, I'm going to miss you. Currently, we're the only two guys in the bell choir. And you have to understand, in the middle of the winter time, when all the ladies have their hot flashes, him and I have to open up the windows and turn the air conditioner on. <laughs> I'm really going to miss you <laughs> for that support. Because we're right next to each other, too. You know, we're down there with the big bells. So 
really going to miss you, and I thank you for supporting the Bell Choir and, and helping me because, you know, I don't really have any much in the way of music talent. I'm tone deaf, and I, but they taught me to read some music, and the mechanic was always there to help me out, and, and I'm very grateful for that, and I really, really will miss you. And by the way, are there any guys here interested in joining the Bell Choir? <laughs> but again, I miss you so much. You want to say anything? All right. Thank you so much for being a part. We really will miss you. We hope to see you again, too. I hope this isn't goodbye. So. I wanted to, um, I don't have that problem about talking too short. Every remarks talking about. I knew everybody was going to be telling jokes and, and, and making laughter, but I, I, I try to take a different angle at this when I was thinking about if I would say anything at all. And as you all know, I retired um, a year or so ago. In that process of retiring, my brother-in-law, which is a ear, nose, and throat doctor, him and I would have conversations about me retiring. And I told him, I said, listen, you can't talk to me about retiring because I'm just a plumber. You are a doctor. You change people's lives. You take tumors out of their throats and save their lives. You make them have a much better quality of life because what got the talent God gave you. I said, so it's not even the same. It's not even close. I would hope when I retired that there's somebody at the airport that misses me. Maybe. But it doesn't really matter because what I did was replaced the very next day. That's just, that's just how it is. That's the reality of it all. Then I thought about my Kenneth retiring. And I'm like, wow. What he does, it isn't earthly things that he did. It's eternal things. He was called to be a pastor. Give him a hand if y'all want to. <clears throat> He was called to be a pastor, and God gave him talent, which is, everybody knows, it's undeniable how good of a musician he is. And him and I have talked several times throughout this year. We've had a lot of talks. And one thing I got out of that besides the mu music is that he is a man with God's heart. No question. Cannot be denied. So the fact that you took God's leading to be a minister to church, first off, you stepped out on the limb by doing that because James says you'll be judged more strictly by doing that because you're more accountable. So that's, that's, that's one limb you stepped out on. And then secondly, I don't think you retire from callings. So nobody really thinks that you are done by any means. And in, in the conversations that you and I have had, you don't think you're done either. You think there's more work for God for you to do. You just feel like the season at this point, unfortunately, for chance is over. Now, I've heard several people say, well, I hope it's not goodbye. So I'm just give you a little tidbit of what he told me right at the other side of that piano not too long ago. He told me that it wouldn't be out of the question that he would come and from time to time and volunteer to play a song for us every now and then. I don't think anybody, <clears throat> and obviously I don't think anybody in this room would, would, would mind that happening. Well, you're welcome to come play anytime. And another thing he told me that really, really, really blessed my heart, even though my retirement was insignificant compared to my brother-in-law, which is retiring in, in, in uh, July this year from his practice, and much more insignificant than his retirement, that you got to have peace in your heart about doing it. He told me God gave him peace about the process, and that really touched my heart when he, when he told me that. So I got thinking about it. McKenna's okay, but Kenneth is good. He's retiring. He has peace. He still has a calling that he has to do, as simple as that. But here's, somebody said something to me this morning, I didn't even think about it. And I'll use this illustration. I got a letter in the mail all day from my doctor. I've been going to the same doctor for 33 years. 
I got a letter in the mail. I'm not taking your insurance anymore. I said, what? Because to me and my doctor have a special relationship. I'm, I'm Ralph when I go to my doctor, just like, so I, like I make y'all mad. I do him that too. I make him mad. So I, so I was sick. I never get sick. I hardly ever get sick. Knock on wood. Praise the Lord. I do not I hardly ever get sick. But I was sick when, it, when I got that letter. So I said, Mom, I'm going over to uh, some medic one thing over here and see one of these quack doctors and get me some medicine. Well, they didn't give me no medicine. My doctor would have gave me medicine. Because <clears throat> when he sees me, he says, what are you doing here? You don't have a, a, a physical. I said, and he'll look at me. He goes, oh, you probably got a sore throat and you got to sing Friday night. And you want me to give you some miracle medicine. That's what he says to me. That's how I, I said, yeah, that's exactly what I want. I want to be able to sing Friday night. I was so upset that that doctor sent me that letter. I called his office, and I said, listen, this is a bunch of baloney. I've been going to this doctor for 33 years. Don't send me a letter and tell me goodbye. You have that doctor call me. She said, Mr. Sellers, just ignore that letter. She, for what she did, she told me when, I, 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 when Penny gets worked up, which she never does, by the way. <laughs> she, I tell her, calm down, baby, just calm down. She said, Mr. Sellers, calm down. He, it, it was a mistake. He's still your doctor. I said, good, because I want him to call me if he's going to knock me off his list, because I think I deserve that. Might be wrong. That's just Ralph. So because of the person I am, I, might, I probably acted differently than, than a lot of people would have in this room to my doctor. And it dawned on me this morning that each of us are affected in a different way by McKenneth's retirement. Every one of us. Some of us don't even know McKenneth. And we think, you know what? And the man's old. It's time for him to retire. <laughs> Some people's thinking that. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You get old, you retire, right? <laughs> so, yeah, I know, he is. He is. He's vintage. Okay, that's what it is. Some people, some people are thinking, what is going on? What are we going to do without him? What kind of changes are coming? What's going to happen in the church? Well, this isn't the first change this church has been through. And I know right now, when my... When, I'm considering each and every one of you family. We just need to pull together. We need to love each other and love the purpose of this church. As good of a man as McKenneth is, he is not the reason this church is here. It's God and God only. We need to, to pull together and worship God. Because you know what? That's what McKenneth wants us to do. And so I'm going to challenge you to pray that your heart can be in a place that God can reveal to you what is your place in this church, how you can help out in this church. And we're going to pray for McKenneth that, that God will give him a clear vision in his journey after his retirement. And McKenneth, I would love for you to pray for us, that we can continue to be what we can be for, the, for this community. You're a good man, and we love you, and we would um, love to have you come back and play any time you want to play. You're always welcome here. And the bond that we've grown between you and I, my family, your family, and, and many others here are much closer to, to you than I am. But it's nobody here in this room that doesn't love you. And we thank you for all you've done. It's hard to even think about this day. 26 years, yeah. And having worked day in and day out with McKenneth, first he was here on a part-time basis, and then um, after about five years, I guess, came on on a full-time basis. Two things that I want to say that I think about with McKenneth. Now, there are a lot of stories that I could tell that I won't tell. Two, th two, two observations. One is that um, 
I think most of us have very little understanding of the breadth of McKinnett's musical talent. Um, to think of someone who can do the variety of things that McKinnett does is just amazing. I mean, just think on a day-to-day -day basis right now, the, the early service is different from the second service. Working with voices and with various instruments, working with handbells, the different kinds of things that you do in the church and in the community, leading in things like CYT and various efforts to bring quality music to this area, the breadth of your skill and your, your understanding of music is just phenomenal. The second thing that I think about as I think about you, McKenna, is your servant heart. And it is absolutely wonderful to watch the way that you are willing to step up. Anything that you're asked, you're willing to get involved and do whatever you can. And I've appreciated that through the years as we've worked together in worship services, in weddings, in funerals, and all kinds of odd things in between. And seeing that, that, that servant heart, not, not seeking spotlight, not seeking a lot of attention, just seeking to do what God leads you to do, is something that I greatly admire and have appreciated through the years. As an example of that and of what uh, Ralph was saying a moment ago, the folks who were here this morning at 1030 don't even know, but McKenna had said, you know, if y'all need me to play on January 5th, and we needed him to play on January 5th, and so here he was, and I will always appreciate that about you, McKenna. It has been a joy to work with you and to have you as part of this team for tw almost 26 years. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, as a member of the staff, I want to say something. Um, but the, the first that I knew of Pastor Eric and McKenna was not Pastor Eric or Pastor McKenna. You, by the way, are Debbie Goforth's husband. Nice to meet you. And you are... Pam King's husband, because I worked at Cortland Elementary with both of those wonderful ladies and got to know about you a little bit before I knew you. Um, and then when we were looking for churches, I got to know you. Um, before that, though, we even got to know a little more of you when our second son decided to join CYT. And we were sitting back there in the audience going, hey, that piano player is really good. <laughs> And then I come and here you are. And when we are watching and Joseph says, that guy's got 13 fingers. And, uh, <laughs> and, we, and we stayed in big part because of that. We came back. And uh, then when I got to know you and I got to sit in on those very serious staff meetings with you and Dick Hillegas. Um, <laughs> and what, it, what, it <laughs> what a joy that has been. Um, and when I bring 30 little kids up on stage and um, somebody has to kind of fill in the empty spots of taking 15 minutes to get 30 little kids up on stage and McKenneth is just sitting there playing and it's all going beautifully as far as everybody out here knows. And I'm going, <gasps> but he's calm. He's got it all together. And uh, thank you for filling in the spots. Thank you for your loving heart. Thank you for all you have done for us, and um, we expect to not stop saying thank you because, you know, we expect you to be back, but, <laughs> but uh, appreciate you. Just want to let you know that. Thank you. Soderholm. Been here since I think around 1990. 
Uh, so we were here before McKinnon came and before Pam came. Um, <laughs> I, I want to say that I, of course, agree with everything about your musical talent, uh, your dedication, uh, the time you give, your willingness, uh, your fun, being fun uh, to be around, and the, um, the great service you've given uh, to our church and to God and to the kingdom. I also want to um, say that one thing that stands out for me is your heart, that you have welcomed people uh, who, no matter what is going on in their lives, um, and no matter what kind of people they are, you accept them, and you've shown them love, and you've shown them the Holy Spirit through you, and not only through your music, but through uh, just who you are. And um, you have made an impact on the Soderholm family in a way that many people don't know. Um, and my daughter and son, uh, Shelly and Kirk, I mean, Shelly and Kirk, that's my son-in-law. Shelly and Aaron both send their best wishes. Uh, Shelly tried to make it down today, but wasn't able to. Um, and they want to make sure that you know that they love you. We wish you the best. We are very sorry to see you go. Um, but um, we know that God has a plan for you that's going to be even more marvelous than it's been here for us. Uh, and one last thing I thought about is uh, that time you, we were doing a play and you were supposed to get angry. <laughs> Whoever remembers that, he was charged with throwing a book down. And the rehearsal wasn't very good because it's not really in him. I think Pam had to teach him how to do it. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's a real testament because you know, and most of us could easily throw a book down. <laughs> so, anyway, we thank you and we love you and I'm sure we will be seeing you again. Okay, and one, oh yes, Pam also. She was half the team very much and uh, she means so much to us as well. Well, not many people get the opportunity to see what kind of music McKenneth is playing from. I remember the time that he was doing this magnificent offertory, and I looked up on the keyboard, and there's a bulletin upside down, and he's just playing away. Because he plays from his heart. He plays to God. He plays to worship. He plays to lift people's hearts to God. It doesn't matter what's in front of him. His hands speak. His hands share the love that God has sent to us. And I don't know anybody that will be able to fill those shoes, but I know that God has a plan for this church. God has a plan for you, McKenneth. And I just pray that we will be open to him, that you will be open to him, and follow his direction. And I just thank you for the honor and the privilege to serve with you. It's meant a lot to me. And you've, you've brought me a long way. I had no idea how to direct a choir. And as a matter of fact, the, the picture that we saw earlier, I was at the keyboard and he was directing the choir. Uh, but we didn't take long to get that straightened out and know that he belonged behind the keyboard. Um, but God has been so good to us and we just thank you so much for your heart, for your serving, and for all that you've done here. Thank you, McKenneth.
okay, McKenna. Just a few minutes ago, my wife Judy was up there talking about um, you having to learn to lose your temper. And I remember Pam going, oh, we got to work on you. We got to work on you to do this. This is how you do it. But I knew that in the back of my mind, my wife wishes I had that problem. Well, it just goes to show the character you are. You are m magic on the keyboard. Not only are you a good man, but you are magic on the keyboard. And a lot of people know how to play an instrument. And we have so many, many talented folks here that really do know how to play an instrument and do it well. And there, there are many people who, like me, can play notes, but there's just something about being able to do it where it becomes music. A lot of people play notes. Some people make music. It's the difference between the notes on the sheet of paper and being able to shape that and put color in it and make music. And Kenneth, you make music. And we'll never forget that. And we will miss that greatly, especially in the first service. Because there's so many times, Sunday after Sunday, he plays this piano, makes it sing. And it fills this room with beautiful, beautiful, beautiful music. And that's just a way that shows God's love. This is how he loves us. And we can hear that music. And we have been privileged to hear that from you. So, McKenna, th thank you so much. And anytime you want to come back, we'll take you. Thank you. Well, sir, that was serious, just like I promised, right? Sir, if you would come up on stage for us. So it's just a small, small gift and, and kind of a token of, of what we appreciate for you. And, and, and obviously, we'd like you to say a few words as well, if you could. Just a few, like five or six, if we can keep it to that. So that's, that's for you and, and Pam and just a kind of a, just a reminder. You, you can do what you want. Open it, open it, open it. Oh, okay, open it. <laughs> My wife's in charge of the bows, by the way. That's not me. I can't see it. Oh, uh, it's blessed assurance. She, hey, Nancy, this is why you was calling me, asking me. Okay, she asked me what's one of your favorite hymn, and I said, well, there's so many. I don't know. I said, I think one of my favorite, one of them is Blessed Assurance, and it's basically because this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. It's one of my favorites. So, thank you so much. This is great. So I need to talk now? Oh, he says for me to talk now. You remember the phone book where the fingers are doing the walking? That's me. I'd rather let my fingers do the talking than sit them out. And I'd rather be down there than up here. <laughs> but anyway, you guys are being so nice. Thank you, Nancy, whoever's in charge of all this food and all this setting up. You go, you go beyond, always. It's been so nice how you do this things, And, uh, man, I don't know where I start even thinking about all the things that you've said. It's just, um, 
all the things reflecting back, Eric, when I <laughs> look at them thinking about you. Oh, yes, the things we have seen and done in the last 20, almost 26 years. It's been great working with you and then being the, you've been the pastor. Um, so a lot of the musicians that have come through here and been part of his church with me and, and they've come and gone. So, but it's been so good to get to know all of you and, and once again, I think I'm speechless, really, because of what you've all said, because, wow. Uh, um, I don't know. I, I can't say I just All I can do is say thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I do. That makes it worth I must say that our family has grown here. Josh is back there by the door with my grandson, Caden. Pam could not be here tonight because she has 103 fever when it was flu. So please pray for her. I love this church. It's been a great church. It's been a great 26 years. I've been, I just really have so many to, memories, good memories, and through this whole time. Lord, it's been so good. God is good. He's going to continue to be good. He's got plans for you guys. He's got plans for me. So we just got to look for the open door, see what he has for us. Once again, thank you. It's been a great journey. And uh, we'll see each other again. We will. Let's go ahead and close in prayer, if you would, please. Bow your heads. Holy Father, we come before you with grateful hearts. So, so thankful that you have blessed Pastor McKenneth with with those gifts and talents and that you have blessed us through him um, for so many years. God, I thank you for just the the possibilities that you you make uh, for us in our lives. You say for everything there is a season, and we're we're grateful for that, and we just pray that um, you would see... uh, Pastor uh, McKenneth and Pam through this to this next season, and, and may it be a joyful and blessed one. God, I pray that you would watch over this church. Um, at, you know, as we kind of move on ourselves, it's, it's difficult, Father, but we know that you have made a way. And, and just like Ralph said, if if we make our mission to glorify you, uh, it's going to be okay. And God, I just pray that we would do that. I do ask for your hand of protection over us and, and over the King family, and and God, just continue to bless them. Uh, We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen.